Hey there, my name is Craig. I'm the Architect Guy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add some blurred people to a photograph using Photoshop. So this is the image we're going to work towards. There's the base image of the coffee shop, and then I added the three blurred walking people in the image. So to do that, we will start with the base image. I'll just drag this over here. And then I downloaded a couple images of people walking that I thought would work. So I've got those opened up in different tabs. So we will start with, uh, let's start with him. So usually if you can, try to get a PNG image from the internet because then the background uh, is already transparent. You won't have to worry about that. But in this case, it looks like it should be transparent, but it's not. So we're going to have to do a little bit of clipping here before we can drag and drop him over. So if you just do the quick select tool, you'll see it works pretty good, but it's getting a little bit of our guy here, so we want to get rid of that. So if you hold, if you get the selection tool, and then if you hold Alt, that's got a little minus sign next to the tool. So that means that whatever you're selecting is going to take out of the selection, which is what we want to do in this case, because there's too much of him selected. And then I'm just going to select all this white from his shirt that's being selected, just get a little bit of a better clip. So just drag around. You can be, you don't have to be precise on the inside, just make sure you get that outside line, what you want. And then you can double click to close the loop. So once you do that, you can just do a nice big loop inside and then double click to close it. And then you're good to go. Just the top of his head here. All right, zoom out. Um, so that looks pretty good, and then just hit the delete button. Uh, looks like there's a little bit on the inside. So get your magic wand, that's okay. Delete, and right over there and hit delete. And then if you hit control D, that'll deselect whatever you had selected. And then just go back to your selection tool and then grab him. Uh, there's a little bit on the top there too. Wanna make sure we get rid of that. Uh, I guess just move him around a little bit, make sure there's not any other miscellaneous pieces there. Alright, so we can just grab him, go to our tab with the image. Uh, it'll probably give you some sort of a profile mismatch. and Not ideal, but it's fine, so you can hit OK. Alright, so there's your guy. Before we want to do too much though, the first step we're going to do is find our eye line. Um, basically the horizon line at 5 foot ish. Um, the reason we do that is no matter where someone is in the image, their eyes and heads are generally going to line up. Obviously, if you're a little bit taller, it'll be higher and shorter people will be a little bit lower. But in general, um, the horizon line is the same for everyone. So I usually I try to go by a door frame or something similar and just go a little bit lower than that. We don't have that here, but I think that horizontal mulling is about the six foot mark give or take so I'll just grab that and go a little bit lower so I just grabbed from the ruler bar and drag down and then if you need to get rid of it just drag it back up so all right that's gonna be our horizon line for our eyes that we're gonna line everyone up to I'm just gonna name this one guy in white shirt so we can kinda of keep track of different people in the image so I'm going to go ahead and put his eyes right at the horizon line. And then I want him to be a little bit bigger in the image, so I hit Control t to get the transformation boxes there. And if I hold Shift and then drag that box, it'll scale him. Uh, let's do something like that. I like him in that corner. Go a little bit bigger is fine. I'm going to hit the check when you're done. Alright, so he's in our image now. Uh, basically where I want him, eyes are about at the horizon line, so we're good there. So I'm going to duplicate him right away, so I'm going to hit Control J. I'll make a copy of the layer. That's kind of just to keep him for reference and make sure if I mess up, I can just grab that and don't have to redo all the edits or anything like that. So I'm going to make sure I click back to that original layer. And I would like to use the filter tool. And then if you go to filter and blur, 
there's a bunch of different options for blurring. In this case, we want to do a motion blur because we want to make it look like he's walking. So I'll hit motion blur. And then we have a couple different options of what's going on here. So you can drag and drop your, or drag your preview over. Uh, zoom out a little bit if you want. All right. Um, and then we basically have two options. Well, I guess a couple options here. So the angle, I have no idea what number I should use, but you can use this little dial here. So if you drag that dial, it, I'll drag this up a little bit. It'll blur it in a different direction. So I want to make sure, I want to make it look like he's walking down the sidewalk. So I want it to be somewhere along those lines, something like that. And then the next step is to play with the distance. Uh, you can blur him a lot, blur him hardly at all. So just find a good medium ground here. You don't want to do too much because then it looks a little off, but uh, let's see here. Uh, let's do something like let's do something like this. So I'll hit OK, and then I'll bring that first guy up. And actually, what I sometimes do is kind of do a mixture of both of them. I'm going to do one more copy of him, just because we're going to use him as a shadow as well. All right. So then I'm going to hide that for right now. All right, so this is going to be our original. Nope, sorry, that's going to be our blurred. Because the original is up. Okay, so I'm going to hide him. There's our blurred. There's our original image. I'm going to put him at about 70%. I like to change the opacity of both of these guys a little bit. Kind of blend them together. Uh, actually, we need him. Play with it a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. I like that look. So it looks like he's walking and a little bit blurred, but not too much in focus here. And next thing you can do is a shadow. So if you hit Control T, if you hold Control on one of these dots, you can drag this around however you want. So the next thing to look at is kind of how these shadows are coming down. So it looks like it's relatively straight up. The sun is, that is, and casting a little bit of a shadow this way. So kind of get something in the general vicinity. And I'm going to call that OK for right now. And then you can go to, let's see here. So it's under Layer. And then if you go to New Fill Layer, go to Solid Color. Uh, you can hit OK for all that. And then now you just want to pick a color. This is going to be for our shadow. I know it shows everything else right now, but that's OK. Uh, so let's go with something like this and hit OK. So then what you want to do is in between here, you hold your mouse between the two layers. If you hit hold alt, you'll have that little arrow and box show up. You want to hit that because it's going to clip that fill color just to whatever is in that layer, which is what we want to do. So I did that, and then there you go. There's a shadow. Not quite done yet. We want to go to multiply. And then obviously that's way too dark. So we want to bring that down by quite a bit. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong layer there. I want to click here and click multiply. This should be normal. And then we want to bring the opacity down. Try to get it to match pretty close to what that shadow is. That looks pretty close. And then I want to do another blur on this one as well because I think a shadow shouldn't be that sharp. I'm going to do a Gaussian blur on this one. And that kind of just blurs all the edges of it. And then it can be pretty blurry. So something like that. I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger. So something like that, just so he's got a shadow. And then, yeah, I think that looks about 
That looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that. Make sure your shadow is below all these other layers. If you, if you have it on top, obviously the clip goes away. But also, um, if your guy is underneath, then the shadow starts to come on top, which is not what you want. So I'd say he is pretty good. So we'll call that OK. And then just clicked a little delay here. Um, OK. So let's see here. So we can't move him around yet because the layer is locked. So we double click there and just hit the enter button. We're good to go. And again, we'll have to delete that background. So really, I'm just going to do that similar process for these other two guys. And then same thing here. OK, so I got rid of all the white space that I didn't want. Now I can bring him in. And then before we get too far, let's group all these. And then we'll call it guy in white shirt. OK, this one's going to be guy in hoodie. All right, so we're going to do something pretty similar. So I'm not going to go over every step again, but I want him to be a little bit further back, maybe behind this bench and next to this pole. So something like that. Obviously, it looks kind of out of place. So I'm going to adjust his size. And I think that'll put him behind the bench. It's a little bit of guesswork here to make sure the scale works, but I think something like that is OK. So I'm going to duplicate him right away just so we have a copy. All right, so I'm back to this layer, and I want to delete part of him so that it looks like he's behind the bench. So I'm going to always create a layer mask or a clipping mask to do this, just so that if I mess up, I can always bring him back and go back to where I was. So if I just click that mask on the bottom left, there's going to be a white square that comes next to him. Um, so then I'm going to... I'm actually going to turn his opacity down so I can see through him and grab the lines a little bit easier of the bench. So I just did my selection tool here. I'll go around the bench. It doesn't matter over there. And then clip him there. Make sure if when you're... So I'm going to hit delete. And what that's going to do is it's going to just clip him out of there, but I can still get it back. So I really want to pay attention to these two, num these two uh, colors here. So if I hit delete with black, nothing happens. So I want to switch those. So if you hit X, that'll switch it. So now I hit delete with the white, and that'll make them disappear, which is what I want. So the white fills people in, the black takes them away. But since I'm hitting delete, it kind of does the opposite. So it's a little confusing. So I'd recommend you get familiar with that before you move on. So masks are a little bit difficult to get a grasp on, but once you figure it out, it, it's a game changer. It's, I use it all the time. All right, so I'm going to bring his opacity back. Actually, it's probably worth me doing a tutorial of that at some point in the future, so keep an eye out for that, just in terms of masks and how to use them. So, all right, I think that looks pretty good. He's behind the bench. He's cut out. Uh, looks pretty good. And then he looks a little, too, uh, he looks okay for colors, but sometimes you can adjust him, the brightness and contrast and exposure and all that good stuff. So if you go to your adjustments box, it might be somewhere dis different than there. You can always go to filter, sorry, it's under image adjustments, and then you can find all these same filters over here. Uh, so I'm going to do brightness and contrast. Again, I want to clip it just to this guy in the hoodie. So I'll click in between. And now whatever I do is just going to affect him and not the whole image. So I'm going to do bring his brightness up just a little bit and his contrast down quite a bit, actually. I think that looks pretty good. OK, next step is to get him to blur. So I'm going to go to my filter, blur, and motion blur again. Looks a little too much. I kind of want him coming more this way, I think. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of shadow. 
you might see a little bit over here. So I'm actually going to create a new layer, bring it below. I'm going to do some sloppy painting to start, but I'll clean that up in just a second. So maybe something like that, probably in this corner. Um, all right, I think that looks okay. I'm going to change this to multiply, bring that opacity way down, just so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. All right, so now I'm going to do that same thing with the mask. So I just click down here and that made the mask. And if I'm deleting, I want to make sure it is white for that top box. And really the the two best options are white and black there. If you use a gray tone or a different color, it'll still kind of work, but not nearly what you're thinking it'll do. All right, so I'm grabbing my layers of what I want to delete. And I'll go along this, actually along this bench line and hit delete because the shadow is going to be behind the bench, not on top of it. And a little bit over here. And then probably, see, what's also really nice about that mask is you can use a paintbrush. So now, since I'm not deleting, this is actually the opposite. So now I want to hit X to bring the black up. So now that'll make anything on the layer disappear. And this hardness, that's okay. If you want to change the size of your brush, I'll put it in the lower left corner here. It's the brackets to move it up and down. Uh, so I think something, just kind of feather this out a little bit. So, uh, something, something like that for your shadow where it's a little bit, but nothing too crazy. And then really for the, I think that looks pretty good. So then for the last guy, again, I'm going to double click that image. And I'm really just going to do the same thing I did before. So I can speed through this. All right, and then just make the group for him. So to select all those layers, by the way, I was hitting Control and Shift. So click on the first one, hold Control, Shift, and then click on the last one, and then Control G will make that a group. So I think that looks about right for what I was looking for uh, to get my couple Blurred, blurred walking people in the image. I tried to match the brightness and contrast pretty close to the base image. This just adds a little visual interest to it. So if I hide these, uh, it's, you know, it's a courtyard patio area, but adding those in there gives a sense of scale, a little bit of visual interest, kind of brings your eye around the image. And it's just a great way to add a little bit more to your images. And I've always been an advocate of architecture. It can be beautiful, but it's really something that people interact with and use and without people in the image it just it feels barren and sterile almost so it's just it's good to see how people can use and interact with the space because that's really what architecture is all about um, so i hope you learned a lot and we're, um, next time you get some images together that you take why don't you try throwing in a few blurred people and just see if that ups your game a little bit and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, keep, up, keep your eyes open for my Instagram and YouTube, and I'll have some more tutorials coming shortly. So again, my name is Craig, I'm the Architect Guy, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.